All right. So Mackenzie Friel is a multi-published author of a sci-fi book, a fantasy book, and the beginning of a fantasy series, which I'm really excited about. I have read Mackenzie's books. Uh, most of them, I have not started the series that she just started publishing. I need to get into that, but I'm really excited to have her with me today. How are you doing today, Mackenzie? I'm good. How are you? Doing very well. I can't believe um, that it's only Tuesday. I feel like it should be Friday already this week, but that's all right. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> well, it'll come eventually. Yeah. Um, but the reason I wanted to have you here today, Mackenzie, is I am just massively impressed with the amount of writing you're able to do with the, your busy life. I know you have a number of commitments um, in your life. I believe you have a couple children. Is that correct? Yeah, I have uh, two kids and then um, this full-time stay-at-home mom, which actually takes a lot out of me, so... Yeah, I, I can definitely attest to that. My wife is a stay-at-home mom of our five children. And even with just the one child, our first child, it does take a lot out of you. There's a lot that goes into it. Yeah, very, very time consuming. I'm still impressed though. I feel like you are always writing and publishing books in such a quick, successive manner. And I'm just so impressed with that, which is why I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you do that, um, which we'll get into in just a minute. But before we get started, tell people, where are you in your author career? It seems like you've been writing and publishing for some time, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, publishing wise, my first book came out in June of 2020. So I am very okay. new to the publishing industry, pretty much a newbie. But writing wise, I have been writing, I think, on my own since about middle school age. I've just written on and off and um it's always been something that I kind of had on the back burner but something that I've enjoyed so you know I've always been writing but it wasn't till a couple of years ago that I decided well maybe I can make a career out of it and it just all happened to work out <laughs> that's awesome so what what made you switch like what made you realize hey maybe this is the time to get serious about it um I think for me it was mostly um I guess you could call it like a 20s life crisis. I wasn't okay. sure I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go. Um, my husband and I had been married for a couple of years since then, and we had our kids. And I was feeling like I wanted to contribute more, but I wasn't sure how I wanted to contribute. And I um, remembered how much I loved writing. I had had to go on the back burner for a couple of years. And then I just kind of picked up my laptop and just started writing. And um, the more I did it, the more I thought maybe I could turn this into a career. And I looked up, up about self-publishing and learned as much as I could. And I felt confident that I could do it. And I'm glad I did. Seriously. And you seem, you've done really well. I mean, I didn't realize that this is the Saviors of Tremnaugh, right? That was the first book that yeah, you published that in 2020. One. Okay. Yeah, so it sounds like we're in a relatively similar place, although I didn't write much in middle school. I, I really didn't start writing until the beginning of this um, a career, as you could call it, about three years ago. But so th the stories that you wrote in middle school, was that the saviors of Tremna or are those other remnants of books that you still plan on writing? Yeah, those are just remnants of books. When I was younger, I was my, I was very much a pantser. I just sat down and I just wrote whatever came out. And okay. some of some of them have been lost over time just with uh, com switching computers and some files got deleted, but I have most of it. And eventually I would like to go back and read through some of the ideas that I have and maybe turn them into full length stories. That's awesome that you still have those. Yeah, who knows? I mean, those could easily turn into some amazing books. It's, it's great that you kept them, um, that you didn't you know, discard those since they were yeah. written by your younger self. Yeah, so it, it might be a little bit cringy, but it's like, you know what, I still have it and I've grown and I can definitely improve on it. So never sure. throw anything away you write. Absolutely. I've learned that as well. And I like that you, you could uncringe things, so to speak. Yeah. You can add your adult mentality to them if you need to. But uh, and that's excellent. So I guess, you know, coming from both of us who are, we have a lot of commitments, a lot of responsibilities. I'm curious to know, you know, what are some of the major things for you that make it hard to have time for writing? I think 
it just boils down to basically how the day goes because every day is different. There are some days where you have a lot of obligations. There are other days where you don't have that many. So you can probably sneak in writing some more, but then, you know, there's also unexpected family issues that come up, unexpected health issues that might come up. And, you know, some days, you know, you just feel burnt out. And I think that that's okay that your body and your mind are telling me you got to slow it down because, you know, you do need a break. And so that's my big thing too, is that I try, even though I'm very consistent with writing, I just, I try to take as many breaks as I can. And sometimes it's just better to just walk away. And, you know, it's hard because your brain, especially for me, it's like, I got to get the story out. But if I don't, if I let the house go to disarray, that's not going to help because then I'm going to be in that mentality of everything's dirty, but then I want to work. So it's, it's a mixture of a lot of things, but I think the biggest thing, you know, is just, you know, life gets in the way when we want to, um, when we want to work. And then just sometimes it's just other obligations that just unexpectedly pop up. And I like what you said there. I mean, everybody has a unique situation, but at the end of the day, like you said, life gets in the way. And that's an interesting way of putting it, but that's just so true. Everybody has different commitments. They may or may not think they do, but you just do. And that can totally get in the way with your writing. But um, yeah, trying to find that balance, so to speak, I'm using air quotations, um, yeah. is, it's just so challenging. And sometimes you don't ever get there, but you're still able to accomplish what you want to. So, I mean, that makes me think, like, how do you keep writing so consistently despite all of these responsibilities and, you know, life sometimes getting in the way? Well, I think for me, when I was thinking about um, how I write consistently, the two things I came up with is that I'm goal oriented and I also have a support system. And that is how I can write consistently. I make short-term goals, long-term goals and daily goals. And then I have a good support system. And so those, it sounds funny because, you know, I'm sure people expect, you know, oh, you just write every day but I don't write every day. I do those two things and that's how I'm able to write consistently. Interesting. Okay. So let's talk a little bit more about these, these goals, because, you know, I, I'm familiar with the concept, you know, long-term, short-term daily goals, those look different for everybody else. And admittedly, those don't always work for me. And I think it could be a preference thing. Um, but I'd love to hear a little bit of like maybe an example for your current work in progress, or maybe the first hollow shine book, maybe of, you know, how, a little bit of that structure worked. Yeah, so I can I can use um, my first book in the Hall of Shine series in, as an example because my my long term goals as an author is that I want to publish one book every year, and so at the beginning of this year, um, I had published I published a book in January. I published uh, my second book, and I was looking at. Um, what I wanted to do for the remainder of the year because I had time because I was able to finish um, the second book up. So I was trying to see what sparked my interest, what I was going to what I was going to go to next. And so when I finally decided on the Holoshine storyline, my short term goal was, OK, I have so many months to do this. I want to get it out by the end of the summer. And so my short term goal was, OK, get it out by the end of the summer, which I did. But I, I actually broke up that short-term goal into smaller goals. So I decided I wanted to take one month to do the first draft and then a month to edit and then so on and so forth. And so my daily goals turned into um, just writing, especially with the first draft. It was like, okay, I want to write at least every day or every other day. And then as the story forms, then my daily goals turned into rewriting chapters one and two, rewriting chapters three and four. And then when the editing process, editing, you know, chapters three and four, and then that's how I continued with my daily goals. And then my short-term goals would change from draft to edit, draft to edit. And then finally, when it got down to the wire, you know, all the goals come, came together. All my daily goals were done. My short-term goals were met. And then my long-term goal was met as well. And then, you know, the process just starts itself over after that. 
That's excellent. That's a really good example. And that's interesting because, you know, frankly, when I think about a schedule like that, uh, I've tried similar things and that doesn't necessarily always work for me. But one thing that I want to highlight with what you said that I find interesting is you mentioned you just kept modifying your goals according to your circumstances and according to, uh, you know, what you were trying to accomplish within that period of time. Like you said, you go back from editing to writing, to editing, to writing. And you yeah. said, you specifically said sometimes it was every day, sometimes it was every other day. Um, and I think that can be challenging for some authors, right? If they get discouraged, if, if they're not modifying their goals to appro- appropriately match their life circumstances. And, yeah. you know, the, this overarching goal, like you said, for you is publishing one book a year. So I, I love that. I think that's really fantastic. And it obviously worked because yeah, it, it works very well. And I know for me, honestly, is when you make short term goals, like I actually, for another example, when I was doing the first draft for the second book in the series, my goal was to have it done in a month. Well, that didn't happen because other things came up and also the story took shape that I wasn't expecting it to. So I modified the goal. And at first I was discouraged, but at the same time, I was like, this is for the good of the story. And so a big thing for me is you have to expect your goal to change, but also don't limit yourself with your goal. If you can't yeah. get a draft done in a month, don't make your goal a month, make it yeah. two months. Yeah, no, that's an excellent, actually really good point that I think some people don't highlight when it comes to making those goals. Because, you know, the former, you just get frustrated if you're not modifying it. And the latter, you, you don't meet, you're not challenging yourself, right? It's just like, it's just have to meet a little bit in the middle. I can say for myself that editing full chapters or writing full chapters doesn't always work because I am a pantser, coincidentally. So for me, I try to have short-term goals of perhaps it's, it's word count per day, or maybe it's time writing, maybe 30 minutes, an hour of writing a day. And that for me works. You just need to think about what the type of goal that works for you, but it's cool to hear that that is your structure and that it works very well for you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about your support system because you mentioned that as, as something else. If you wouldn't mind, just describe briefly, you know, what is that support system that helps you be so successful in writing consistently? Well, for me, my support system comes from several different places. At first, uh, my first, my support system is my husband. When I went into writing as a career, I told him this is what I wanted to do. I need your support on this. And he was like, okay, we will figure it out. We'll, you know, get it done. We'll help. I'll help you with it any way I can. And so like, he's been great about helping when, um, when I finish a draft, he's always the first one to read it. That way he knows the story. That way, if I need to bounce some ideas off of him as a reader, he can give me some feedback. And so that's my first support system. My second support system is I have a writing group with another writer friend. Um, and we meet uh, about once, we meet once a week and uh, we discuss our writing and we all have different backgrounds and we all have different writing stuff. And it's nice to bounce other, other ideas that you have off of other writers because that's what you really need uh, when you're writing is you need to have somebody else who has that writer mind to be able to understand what you're talking about. And so we meet, even though we meet every week, we do talk throughout the week about other stuff. Sometimes people have stuff that come up that comes up that they need help with. And that's a great support system to have. The third, um, this is a lot of support systems. Um, the third support system that I have is I actually, I follow other authors on social media and I see what they're doing. And it's nice to see how transparent a lot of authors are becoming with the, um, with, you know, with the publishing, with the writing that some of them are like, look, I didn't have a good writing day and that's okay. And that's mm-hmm. more of a distant support system, but it's nice to know that it's like, okay, I'm not the only one struggling. There are other people, you know, who may have more success than I do that still have these same problems. So those are kind of where my support comes in. That's excellent. No, it's really good. And to be fair, I hadn't even thought about the, you know, book talk or Instagram or, you know, TikTok communities being considered a support system, but that's totally what it is. If you really think about it, I can recall, you know, the first couple of videos I saw of people saying, you know what, today was a bad writing day and that's all right. And I totally exactly what you said. And I remember thinking, oh, 
Okay. Well, it's good because a lot of social media is very, everything's perfect, right? And it can be challenging to to relate to those things. But I feel like recently, yeah, people have been more transparent. So that's great to recognize that as a support system. But writing groups, I do, I have heard of writing groups being successful. I have more than once thought about joining one or creating one, but haven't had the, uh, the mindset or time to do so. But that's great to hear that, um, that that's being, that's helping you be successful. I love to hear that. Um, but, you know, on the flip side, just kind of like a for your information type things. I'm curious to know, are there any things that you've tried to help you write consistently that failed that maybe, you know, you tried X tactic and it just didn't work out as you expected? Yeah, I do. I, um, when I first started being more productive with my writing and I started, um, doing the goals and stuff, I had seen that people try to do uh, they reach, they, some people have a goal of like, I want to re- write 2000 words, or I want to write for X amount of hours. And I tried that. And it just stressed me out because that's not, I can't work that way. Um, just, I have, you know, I have all these other goals, but just for me, 2000 words a day seems kind of daunting, which may sound mm-hmm. a little silly, but it just all depends on how the story comes out. Cause like I, mm-hmm. I plot and I pants through the story. So I have things that like, I want to have happen, but sometimes if you reach, if you don't reach those 2000 words, like it was a struggle for me because then I felt like an I had an obligation to the words or I had an obligation that I had to sit down for so many hours and it just didn't work for me. I was very much like, I want to do this independently. And so, yeah, I do. Sometimes I do reach 2000 words. Sometimes I only write a thousand words. Sometimes I write for two, three hours if time permits. And then other days I only write for 30 minutes, but I don't, judge my I don't judge my progress by that anymore I just judge by my goal today was to write and that's what I did so that is that is excellent yeah I mean some of the things you mentioned coincidentally sometimes work for me like I did operate on the word count goal for some time I'm not doing that anymore because my circumstances currently don't allow for that but I like what you said it was just like from like a metrics or tracking standpoint that was discouraging to you and it was something that you couldn't really hold yourself to but these other things are ways or things that you can hold yourself to so I I love that I think that you know recognizing failures especially with consistency is an important step to being like all right this isn't working I need to modify and try something else so it's good to hear that right that you know some things for someone who writes so quickly like, oh, you know, you just have to discard some of these other things that I recognize right off the bat don't work. So sometimes as a casual author or as anyone casually doing anything, um, maybe we're resistant to not do something that we think might not work. So um, it's encouraging to hear that. Um, Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, it's nice to know too that, you know, even though that stuff didn't work for me, I know it definitely works for other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know some authors that live by the word count, and I think that that's great. Some people live by the time and even other things. And I think it's helpful to know that it's like, hey, this didn't work for me, but maybe it'll work for you. And, you know, that'll, maybe somebody will be like, oh yeah, that does work for me better. And, you know, go for it, learn from my failure or take that advice. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the best thing you can do is learn from other people's potential failures and your own, right? You're like, all right, I'll try something else or, or just be aware of that. Just learning as best as you can. Um, you know, a lot of people potentially are listening to this, um, are beginning, they're, they're new authors or they're aspiring authors. So I'm curious, of all the things that we've talked about, of the things that you've learned, what are some tips and tricks potentially to help other busy authors get started and continue writing? Um, I mean, all I can say is like, you know, write, but yep. don't, <laughs> but it's, Being an author is just so much more than that. You know, you got to, depending on whether you do traditional or self-published, you know, you got to write, you got to learn the market, you got to learn some of, even if you traditional publish, I'm sure you got to learn some of the publishing. You got to, there are so many things to do with it. And I think the biggest tip I could give anybody who wants to start their writing career is really see, definitely search the market first. And by 
And I mean, you can look at books, but also look at other authors, try to get an idea of what they're doing and see if that'll work for you or not. And definitely just learn the craft as best you can. I mean, I am still learning things I've done. Like I, like I said, I've been writing on and off for years, but I am still learning stuff um, that I didn't know about and just keep going at it, you know, keep writing even keep reading reading helps you learn how to write and so I think that's the biggest tip that I can give is just you know work with what you have and search the market to expand on what you don't know yep I I think that is excellent advice that's very very good advice working with what you have it sounds intuitive but at the same time I think we as humans aren't great at doing that right we we long for more. We try to force something that's not quite working. And, you know, being a casual author like you and myself with a bunch of these other responsibilities, um, just have to accept that and realize yeah, I'm, I'm working with what I have. And knowing that I can actually progress and learning. Yeah. <laughs> learning from industry, being OK with failures and, and learning what you can from other authors in the industry. Um, I know when I published my first book. You know, I made some mistakes that I've since learned from, and, and that's all right. You know, I, I feel like with each book that I publish, I'm doing better and better. So uh, I'm sure you feel the same way. Oh, yeah. I mean, when I published my first book, I was like, oh, yeah, I got all of this done. I know how to do all this. And yeah. then comes the second one. And it's like, I didn't do these things right yep. the first time. And I think that that's OK. Like, I even, you know, I learned how to because I publish on KDP so I learned how to do KDP and then like I learned all these other things afterwards and I was like oh I didn't know this and so when people have a question I'm like let me share what I have with you Mm -hmm. yep yeah I'm the same way it sounds like I we had similar experiences with our first book so that's that's funny um well that's excellent I appreciate you joining me today I want you to let us know where can we find you? Where can we find information about you and your books and merchandise? I believe you have some merchandise as well. I do. So on social media, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. I'm on all three of those. If you want to follow along with uh, book things, I am on Goodreads. I have a website, authormackenziefrill.com. You can check out my books there. I have a blog um, that shares some updates of things. I do have some merch items on my shop. I have um, some book themed bookmarks and magnets and keychains and things. I have a couple new stuff coming that are more, um, that aren't book themed to my books, but they're still book themed um, for other people to check out. So I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> That's excellent. And coincidentally, I didn't realize, I don't think I've ever taken a look at your website. No, I have just, it's been some time. So I need to take a skip hop over to your site. Um, and I need to, to buy your, your latest book, especially before you publish the next one. So that will be coming soon, but, um, thank you for sharing that excited that you were able to join me. Um, and yeah, hopefully listeners will have found some useful information for their own writing. I hope so. And if um, people want to check out my books, my books can be found on Amazon. You can just search Mackenzie Friel and all three should pop up. Excellent. And your future books as well. So um, that is great. Thank you so much. Mm